Current Events 101 by Humongous Quote, We humans are overwhelmed because we are so tiny and the earth is so big and the celestial system so vast. It is very hard for us to think effectively and realistically about what we feel we have learned about this universe. At any rate, we are now at a point where we have to begin to think realistically about how and why we are here with this extraordinary capability of the mind. Our remaining here on Earth isn't a matter of the cosmic validity of any Earthian economic systems, political systems, religious systems, or other mystics organization systems. We have reached a threshold moment where the individual human beings are in what I consider to be a final examination as to whether they individually, as a cosmic invention, are to graduate successfully into their mature cosmic functioning or, failing, are to be classified as quote-unquote imperfects and quote-unquote discontinued items on this planet and anywhere else in this universe. Unquote. R. Buckminster Fuller. Remember when you were seven years old and the playground bully swore he could run faster than anyone else because he was wearing an expensive pair of shoes? Aren't you glad you grew up? My house costs ten million dollars. That makes me more prosperous than someone who hitchhikes and lives out of a sleeping bag. I have a two hundred thousand dollar car. Thus, I'm superlative to a person who's 40 and driving the same Corolla they did in high school. I make, or rather accumulate, $800,000 a year, so I'm more capable than a cashier at a grocery store. As weak as an anorexic 30 days into a hunger strike. Most people in this fucked up paradigm possess the same puerile demeanor they did when they were wearing footy pajamas and waiting for the crossing guard. Rather than value their own attributes, the majority of people covet material possessions, fallaciously believing these items prove their proficiency over others. Physically, we're all grown up. Spiritually, we haven't progressed one iota. You're sitting in a brainwashing factory, known as school, and the teacher pulls a map of the U.S. down from the ceiling. Before you are 50 states, clearly defined. Oddly enough, a few months later, when you fly above the U.S. and gaze down on the planet, these same divisions in the land don't magically appear. Hence, you don't know where Arkansas ends and Missouri begins. That's because neither Arkansas nor Missouri exist. No state does. Neither do countries, counties, nor cities. They're figments of our imaginations. That said, we've lied to ourselves so long we actually think these fictitious territories are real. Thus, we're certain that which isn't is. Anyone who does believe in bogus boundaries on Earth is obviously insane. That's a whole lot of crazy folk, ain't it? Have you honestly concluded this planet, being a living entity, recognizes these borders placed upon it? If such is so, how come the lines on that map in the classroom don't appear on the Earth when you fly over it? Even after all the abuse by those we claim to be our leaders, we still accept the United States is a democracy? Knowing the word democracy is defined as a government by the people, shouldn't the only leaders we have be ourselves? After all, we are the people, aren't we? If we do have leaders besides ourselves, which is the case in our paradigm, we no longer have a democracy. Do we? Still wish to pretend you're autonomous? Then how come Barack Obama can quote-unquote legally spy on you, but you can't do the same to him? Why can he enter your house whenever he pleases, but try to make it across the White House lawn to his chill crib 
and you'll be blown away like lint. When was the last time you ordered a drone strike on your neighbor? You might think this system works as you ponder it from your opulent house, but ask yourself if the more than one billion people starving to death on Earth see things the same. How about over 50% of humans who survive on $2.50 a day or less? You may refer to this as thinning of the herd, natural selection, or social Darwinism, but you'd be a fucking idiot if you did. How does being able to collect more useless fabric known as cash than somebody else make you more fit to survive than those who don't entertain such insane activity? If anything, individuals refusing to engage in a monetary system are much more adept at understanding what this universe is about. Again, see how far your suitcase of $100 bills gets you on the nearest inhabited planet outside of Earth. You've begun to look around, and you realize something isn't right. It isn't just a scrap here and a tidbit there. The entire system is rotten to the core, and has been since inception. If the house is built on quicksand, using termite-infested lumber, you don't repair, you scrap and begin again. Welcome to Current Events 101. It isn't time for an overhaul, it's time to gut and rebuild perpetually keeping in mind how screwed up our present situation is. Consider the fact we're existing every second moments from nuclear annihilation. We can do better. The only way we can do worse is if the missiles had already been launched. These audio chapters were meticulously hand-spun in the hopes the mighty masses may awaken. Our species is not only asleep, it's in a coma. Well, the alarm clock is shrieking, and the adrenaline-filled syringe is about to pierce flesh. <laughs>